Okay, time for a new filament. This is a new manufacturer for us. We'll also be using CC3D and Filacube for our PLA filament, but they didn't have the color we wanted, so we're going to try this one, HZST3D. So this is a uh, gunmetal gray. That's the reason we got it. And it's made in China. Like most, most of the, or, or actually, Fila Cube is made in the USA. So if it, Fila Cube had this color, I would have used them. But anyway, let's open it up. So it's got similar packaging to CC3D. Uh, so it's got a uh, bubble wrap and a cardboard box. And it's got a little uh, certificate of inspection, I guess. Yeah. So that's nice. Got a pretty good vacuum, not super good. Not as good as some of the other manufacturers. So let's open this up. Yeah, that didn't get a real big sucking of air there. So I've had this for a while, a few months, so it's possible it was better right after I bought it. But anyway, it's probably fine. It's got a desiccant pack inside, so that's good. This wheel looks identical to the uh, Looks like an identical reel to the uh, CC3D, so I wonder if they're <coughs> part of the same company or they have the same suppliers. So, yeah, like it's even got the same little paper tag here. That's interesting, huh? Maybe it's the same company. It just has a different name for some reason. So that, that actually bodes well because we use this a lot. This uh, CC3D. Yes, yeah, so even the even this label, the printing is identical. Hmm. Very interesting. Okay, well that's good. Like I said, since we use this very successfully, I'm anticipating this is going to work similarly. So maybe if you got this other one, it's because of the color. You can see this one is really shiny, and this one is more dull. It has some blue in it. That's the gunmetal part. So kind of a matte with some blue in it uh, versus uh, shiny silver. So I'm really happy with this color. So we'll see how it turns out, but. Um, uh, this is boding well for what we want so far. So it says uh, 215 plus or minus 15 degrees, which is good. This says 210 plus or minus 15. So we print this at three, 225. Should be no problem printing this at 225, so that's good. We print a lot of things, uh, sets of things in different colors. So in this particular case, there's two items in a set that are silver and gunmetal. So we want to have the contrast there. But the fact that we're printing a bunch of, of the same thing in, the, in different colors means we, I, I don't really want to mess around with the temperature that much. It's much easier to print everything at the same temperature if possible. Of course, if it doesn't work, then I'm, I'm not going to do that. But I try to find a PLA that prints at the same temperature, 225. So I tried some Hatchbox recently, and uh, I wanted to print at a much lower temperature, plus the color wasn't right, so I ended up not using it. All right, so let's weigh this and see how much we got. We got 100, uh, 1,179 grams. Now I could take one of the empty reels on this one. In fact, I think I'll do that. I'll get an empty reel uh, from an old one of these. This is the first time we printed with this supposedly different company. It looks like it's the same to me, but. So I'll get an empty reel of this, and then we can get the net weight of uh, this reel. So make sure we got our money. All right, so the way the scale works is you put something on here when you turn it on, and it's going to set that as zero. So now I take this off, it'll show negative. But put this on and change it to grams. And so we got, I uh, hope you can see that, 1,013 one, uh, 1, grams. So we got our one kilogram, so that's good. So let's go ahead and uh, try the temperature tower and our, our, our we'll do our usual test, temperature tower, bed and layer adhesion, then we'll do our fun print. Okay, so we're going to do our usual tests. We're going to start out with the temperature tower like we always do. And we're trying to print all our PLAs at 225 because we're printing, printing multiple things, multiple copies of the same thing with different colors, so we use different uh, filaments hopefully from the same manufacturer, but in this case it's not going to be, it's going to be a different manufacturer. So Now on the box it said, um, or on the reel, it said 215 plus or minus 15. So that's uh, 
encouraging. It should uh, be in its range of printability with the param parameters we're setting. I've had a lot of good luck with that. The way these temperature towers work is we start at the at the highest temperature to avoid clogging. It's not going to. It was just going to clog at lower temperatures, not higher temperatures. Higher temperatures might have problems with sagging and other things, but clogging shouldn't be an issue. And then we go down to lower temperatures. So we set up this uh, file. Then there's a link to this on the in the show description, so you can get this if you want. This is an OpenSCAD, my favorite uh, modeling software. And so we're going to start at 230 and go to 210, like we've done with all the other filaments that we've uh, tested recently. So. All the, all the all the recent PLA filaments. All right, so we'll bring this over to uh, Simplify 3D, and I'll show you how to set up the temperature gradient for this uh, print. Okay, so here's our model in Simplify 3D, and this is on our, the new G2. So I've, you've seen a review of my G2. I really like it. It's got a super robust uh, z-axis, so it solves lots of problems. So, and it's it's just more reliable overall than my uh, FlashForge Dreamer NX, and so it's a great upgrade. It's not super expensive like some printers. So, anyway, let's get back to the project. So again, we're going from 230 to 210. So we bring up our temperature tower uh, process, and we're just doing the standard uh, extruder options here. And I, I've been using Auto on most projects now because if you, I was originally doing everything at 0.4 millimeter nozzle or uh, extrusion width, but 0.48 works works just as well as a lot it's faster. So it's only when you have to do fine details that you need to go down to point the actual nozzle diameter. So anyway, this is a little side note. Anyway, but over to temperatures again. So uh, printing on the glass uh, print bed with a removable surface on the G2, we want to go to 50 50 degrees C bed temperature. So that equals about 40 42 degrees on the uh, uh, removable surface, which is what, what works well. And then here's our temperature grade. So the first layer down at the bottom here, we start at 230, and then we go up through layer 18, it's also 230, that's this first segment here. And then each layer above that, each uh, increment of layers above that, we lower the temperature. So with Simplify, Simplify 3D, this is easy to do. And that's all set up. Now for cooling, for PLA, we almost always use zero on the first layer and 100% on all the other layers, so we're gonna be doing that. And the infill percentage is only 20%, which is fine. We don't care about strength on this model. Okay, so let's see how long it's going to take. 53 minutes. So uh, be, this Simplify 3D underestimates the temp the times by, I don't know, 10, 15%. Sometimes this depends on the model. So that's kind of disappointing, but I've learned to, you know, add, like for this, I'll probably put it in 57 minutes. It's about 10%. Maybe 58 minutes would be enough to get this model done. So, All right, we'll put this on the machine and switch over to the time lapse. I wanted to show you one thing that I started doing now that I, I have these uh, filaments that have these paper tags on here. It, it helps you keep from losing the end of the reel. So so let me go ahead and get this off air. This is brand new, so the end of it is a little bit bent up, so we're going to cut that off. That's not one of my trick, though. Trick is let's put it, let's, before I show you the trick. Let me put it on the holder. Okay, the trick is is that having this uh, paper tag here makes it really easy to keep track of the end of the reel. So I just leave this on now. So as I let me get this set up. As I put this in, I just hold on to this paper tag. Put this in. Putting it in through the uh, feed feed tube, so it comes out. It'll come out eventually. There we go. All right, then I make sure this reel is. Uh, make sure these extra loops here are on the reel. Then I just leave this tag on here. So the best thing is when you're taking off, taking the reel out. It gives you something to hold on to, and it's much it's much uh, easier to not lose track of the end of the reel. So I'm going to do this on all my reels now, even if it doesn't come with it. I saved an extra one from a reel I finished up. So this is a nice little tag. I, and was, I, what I'm telling you is I would leave this on and use this as a way to pull the um, 
filament back out when you're done. It's just easier to keep grab onto it because you're holding onto this piece of paper instead of just a little thin uh, filament which can fall out of your hands pretty easily. So, all right, so we'll load up this filament and do our temperature tower. See how we did. Looks like we got a lot of sagging on all, all the temperatures. That's not too great. The bed the bed adhesion is okay. We got lots of sagging. We don't really bridge large areas, so I'm not that worried about that. So a lot of uh, yeah, it was it couldn't it couldn't wasn't cooling wasn't cooling enough so definitely lower temperatures were better hmm oh we have to put this at a lower temperature at 225 and the pointy thing came out okay at 225 this bridge doesn't look too great bridges are definitely better at lower temperatures so Looks like we're stuck uh, printing this at a lower temperature. Mm. Probably should do another temperature tower starting at uh, 210, I guess. If we really want to dial in this filament, we're going to be using a lot of it. We better take the time to do it right. Okay, well, our first temperature tower didn't go low enough. At least I don't think it did. So we're going to try a little short one here to go down to 200. Hopefully it doesn't need below 200. We'll find out. In any case, we just changed these parameters here. Uh, starting temperature is 210 and 200, and the step is 5. So it just goes to... So we put this simplify 3D. We just changed the temperatures in that... Uh, gradient profile that I showed you for the first temperature tower we did, so I'm not going to show that again. All right, we'll try this, and eventually we'll get it dialed in. It's printing pretty well so far. I just need some tweaking. See how this one turned out. Alright, so compared to this one, so 210, there's still some sagging going on there. I don't do a lot of bridging. I'm going to go with 205. I don't really want to go lower than that. I'm afraid it's going to get clogged up. We're going to go with 205 and print our layer adhesion test. If we get good layer adhesion, then we're good to go. If that doesn't work, we'll try going to lower temperatures, I guess. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas, and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming. And if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out, and keep looking up.